Welcome back to the course on audio signal processing for music applications. In this uh, demonstration class, I want to talk about periodic signals. Periodic signals are at the basis of uh, understanding uh, most signals and are also at the basis of uh, Fourier analysis. So it's good uh, to talk a little bit about them. Let's start by uh, opening Audacity and uh, generating uh, some periodic signals. So here it has a tone generator and uh, the most fundamental periodic signal is the sine wave that we already have uh, seen. So let's generate a sine wave of uh, 500 Hertz, duration of uh, 5 seconds and amplitude uh, 0 0.8. Okay, so here is our sine wave. Uh, let's hear it. Okay. In order to see that it's periodic, we can zoom uh, into it and here we see the sinusoidal oscillation, the periodic oscillation of uh, a sine wave. If we zoom even more, we're going to start seeing the samples that are um, present in, in this signal. This is a discrete signal, so we have generated uh, this signal at 44,100 hertz, so we'll have that many samples per second. Okay, so the first thing we might want to do to understand the concept of periodicity is uh, to measure what is the period length. You know, the idea of periodic means that there is a, a period that is repeating a cycle of uh, the sound. Okay, so this is a cycle of this uh, sinusoid and in here we can see what is the length of this selection I made and it says that is 0 0.002 so that means 2 milliseconds. If we go to the terminal and uh, have Python in we can use it as a calculator so we can uh, convert this period length into a uh, frequency. So the inverse of the period so 1 over 0 0.002 will be our frequency and of course it gives us 500 Hertz 500 Hertz is the frequency of this sinusoid okay another thing we might want to to check is okay uh, this uh, period has a series of samples so how many samples does one period of this sinusoid has well in order to compute that what we should do is start with the sampling rate the sampling rate is 44,100 and uh, multiplied by the duration of this uh, period. So we multiply by 0 0.002 and it gives me uh, 88.2 which is uh, the number of samples of a period. Of course it should be an integer number so I guess it's going to be 88 samples in uh, one period. Okay. Now let's uh, generate another uh, uh, sinusoid, but of a different frequency. So let's uh, maybe open uh, a new file. Okay, and let's create uh, another uh, sinusoid. But instead of 500 hertz, let's put, for example, 5000 hertz. Okay, so this is the sinusoid of 5000 hertz. We can hear it too. Okay, clearly much higher and we can also zoom and to see uh, the periodicity but here we already see that is not so nice in fact the samples are not really shaping a smooth uh, sinusoidal function this is because there is less samples per period therefore we don't have a very smooth version so how many samples are in one period? Well, not that many. In fact, here we can even count them. And it's uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So in fact, we have like 8, 9 samples per one period. Not exactly, because they don't coincide, of course, with a period. Of course, it makes sense, because if we uh, had seen that uh, the frequency of 500 had 88 samples in one period, now that we have 10 times the frequency, 5,000, the number of samples will be 10 times less. So it's going to be around 8 or 9 samples. That's pretty good. 
Of course, this relationship between the number of samples and the frequency is a very important one and related with the sampling rate. The bigger the sampling rate, of course, more samples we'll have, and for higher frequencies we'll have more samples. At 44,100, as we go up in frequency, and if we go even higher, like 10,000 or even 15,000, the number of samples will be very less, and therefore the shapes will not look like a sinusoid, even though it's a sinusoid. Okay, let's uh, look at another uh, um, periodic signal but uh, different from a sinusoid. So we will create a new uh, file and we will generate a tone, but in this case let's generate, for example, a sawtooth. And instead of 5000, let's go back to the 500 hertz. And maybe the amplitude, we don't have to put it that uh, high because uh, this is a very rich sound and it will be quite uh, loud otherwise. Okay, so this is a uh, a sawtooth waveform. Again, we can now listen to it. Okay. If we zoom in uh, into this uh, waveform, well, we see that it's very periodic, and since the sampling rate is high enough and the frequency is uh, kind of low, we can, if we zoom in, well, we have a lot of samples per period. But in this case, the period which we can measure, and it's going to be the same thing, 500, it doesn't mean that there is one frequency at 500 hertz. In fact, this waveform has many frequencies. It has 500 hertz as the fundamental frequency, and it has multiples of that, uh, so that it's a harmonic sound. And how can we check that? Well, we check that with a spectrum analysis. And in the uh, Audacity, we have the possibility to plot the spectrum, okay, and here now it tells me that there is not enough data because I have to choose a bigger part of the sound, so let's choose a bigger fragment of the sound, and now if we replot, now we can uh, visualize the spectrum of this uh, sawtooth. And clearly, we see that it's a quite complex spectrum in which it has many peaks. In order to understand this, I think it's good to compare it with the sinusoid we started with. So this was the sine wave uh, we started. And if we do the same thing that we have done now with the sawtooth, that is to compute the spectrum, well, we see now that it's clearly very different. The, the spectrum of a sinusoid has only one major peak at the frequency, in this case 500, and the um, spectrum of this sawtooth has many peaks which correspond to all the frequencies present in this harmonic signal. Okay, now let's even do uh, something a little bit more uh, complicated. Let's see that we can generate one signal, but instead of being the same frequency all the time, let's have it that it changes in time. So these are normally called chirp functions. So let's have a sine wave being a chirp, and let's go from the two uh, frequencies we have uh, mentioned, so from 500, let's go up to 5000 Hertz, and let's have the amplitude as 0.8 all the time, and let's have these five seconds. So now we have kind of a glissando, a chirp, and of course we can play it again. Okay, so it's a frequency that goes up, and uh, again, we of course we can zoom, but we will see that the period keeps changing in time. So at uh, here at the beginning, we'll have. Uh, a period that is going to be quite long, it will be the 500 hertz, the 2 milliseconds, and by the end it will be much smaller, it will be 10 times smaller. Okay, And of course we can visualize that by analyzing the spectrum of this uh, signal. So if we select a portion at the beginning and analyze uh, the spectrum, we will see that it has the around 500 Hertz uh, frequency 
and if we go to the n, so we go to uh, the n of the of the signal here, and now we compute the replot the spectrum. Well, it has shifted. It's going towards the 5,000 hertz. So it's a uh, it's also one single peak, but much higher. Okay. And that's, uh, that's a good way to visualize and understand uh, periodic signals. Okay. Um, anyway, so this is all what I wanted to say today about uh, periodic signals. Uh, so let's go back to the slides. And, uh, well, we haven't uh, used much. We basically have used Audacity. And uh, we have talked about uh, electronic periodic signals, uh, synthesized periodic signals. Uh, these are signals that are quite good to play around with because we know uh, how we generate them and so therefore when we analyze them we know what to expect. So in next demo class we will complicate that so we will actually analyze more complex uh, signals, sounds, that uh, might have some part of the periodic, might have some parts that are not periodic so they reflect more the reality of uh, real sounds. So I hope to see you next class. Thank you very much.